So another Marathi speaking gentleman, his name was Hedgevar, don't get lost with the proper nouns, you don't have to remember them. But he started an organization which is best known by its acronym RSS. If you translate the full, full name of the RSS into English, it basically loosely translates as National Volunteer Corps. Sounds very innocuous, but it is anything but that. The RSS was founded on the most, uh, it, on the most explicit objective of turning India into a Hindu nation. Now, just for the record, so that our data is refreshed in our minds, India currently is estimated to have 1.4 billion people. Now, Hedgevar started this organization, RSS, in 1925 with the explicit purpose of converting India into a Hindu nation where Muslims and Christians and all others are considered second-class citizens. That organization in 1952 started a political party. It calls itself, it is a self-styled socio-cultural organization and it is not even registered calls itself the world's largest NGO with millions of members, but it is not registered. And in 1952, it started a political party. But that political party did not gain traction for decades for the simple reason that while all this nonsense of Hindutva had begun and was going on in India, there was one man who was leading the Indian people to an epochal struggle against British colonial rule, and his name was Mahatma Gandhi. Everyone has heard of Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi identified himself as a Hindu. He believed in Hindu religion, in Hindu philosophy, and he said that Hindu philosophy is the one which is inclusive, which is pluralist, and which believes that every single person born on the soil of India is a child of India. It is not a surprise that the assassin of Mahatma Gandhi, because all of you I'm sure remember that he was assassinated, was someone who belonged once upon a time to the RSS. Of course, as with most such organizations, such as the KKK, the Nazis, the fascists, the RSS immediately um, disowned this assassin and it has thoroughly maintained or always that this, this guy did not belong, the assassin did not belong to the RSS, but the world knows there is enough evidence. In fact, he was tried, and this man, Savarkar, who wrote this book in 1923, was also tried for Gandhi's assassination because Savarkar was the mastermind of that assassination. But the Indian law at the time was such that it required further corroboration, evidentiary corroboration, and when that was not available, Savarkar was acquitted, but the assassin was hanged to death. Of course, as a side footnote, I can tell you that while this trial was going on, Gandhi's sons, they drove up to the trial judge, submitted a petition saying he should be forgiven because Gandhi would have liked to forgive him. Anyhow, moving forward, the RSS founded this political party, but for decades it did not gain traction. However, in the 1990s, this political party started coming up politically, electorally, because in the 1980s, it started backing a popular movement in India to raise a 16th century mosque to the ground on the belief that it was founded, it was built on top of, the, of a Hindu temple, which was, they claimed, no less than the birthplace of Lord Rama, one of the most revered Hindu gods. So, the, the RSS and its political party, the BJP, they led that movement, that absolutely bigoted movement, which culminated with the public, very public and shocking uh, raising uh, by a mob of that mosque in 1992. And that sort of started increasing the political fortunes. Fast forward to 2014, the BJP, which is the political arm of the RSS, wins power in India as, uh, you know, by winning full majority in Indian parliament. And that is how Narendra Modi, current Prime Minister of India, became Prime Minister. And fast forward to yet more, 2019, last year, Mr. Modi wins re-election with a greater number of seats, with a greater number of votes, and therefore he is now, as Prime Minister, he is now complete, completing in May six years, because one five-year term to one term is five years. 
Now, at the heart of this ideology, Hindutva, at the heart, at the very core, like I said, is to convert India into a Hindu nation. The current chief of the RSS, RSS has had about five chiefs in the last 97 years. It's a lifetime position. It's basically a one-way street. Uh, you know, it's a, it's the most fascist, old school kind of setup you can imagine. There is no questioning, there is no debate. The, um, the full-time members, we are, who are known as full-timers, uh, like in the communist parties of the Europe, these are people who have to take a vow of celibacy, never get married, give up their families, give up their possessions, have no worldly possessions, go and live at the RSS offices. This is what they do for an unregistered organization, never forget that. And so these people, the current chief of the RSS, three months ago, in October 2019, at a public meeting in India, he said, the goal of the RSS to make India a Hindu nation is, quote unquote, not negotiated. That's what he said. And this is the man who was invited, who was given a US visa by the United States government in September of 2018, barely 18 months ago, and he was a keynote speaker at the World Hindu Congress, which was basically a dog whistle for the World RSS Congress, because I am a Hindu, and there are millions of Hindus like me who completely oppose the RSS. So he was given a visa by the US government for a World Hindu Congress, and he went to Chicago, to Illinois, Lombard, which is a suburb of Chicago, and he spoke at that World Hindu Congress and he said, Hindus need to come together and unite like a lion so that nobody, no wolves can attack it. So that was a dog whistle for Muslims because this is the one of the most Islamophobic organizations in the world. This is not like Bolsonaro in Brazil. This is not like any other far right movement in any other country because this has a beginning date, 1923. This has a specific organization which has all it has done, it has li lived and breathed and acted upon its instincts, which is to rid India of its Muslims and Christians. This is, this is very, very, very bland. These are the people who are behind every single lynching of Muslims and Christians. These are the people who are behind the attacks of churches and mosques. Okay? The criminal justice system in India is completely complicit with them. Two weeks ago, 14 people who had been sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of dozens of Muslims 15 years ago were freed by the Indian Supreme Court. And Indian Supreme Court said they should be given jobs by the government. This is what is happening in India. So the judiciary, the police, the bureaucracy, the politicians, the government, the news media are all speaking in one language and that is the language of Hindutva. But there are people, there are women and men and children out on the streets, they are fighting. Who do you think is going to win? Thank you so much.